I'm using those really pretty photo backdrops that you can purchase online for up to $80 a piece. Well, yeah, they're gorgeous, but they're not in my budget. So I've created my own version of photo backdrops for my product photography. And today I'm sharing with you how simple this is and how inexpensive it is to create your own DIY photo backdrops for your product photography. All you need is some foam board, scissors, a scraper tool, and your favorite contact paper design. I bought all my contact paper on Amazon and I'll put those links in the description box below for you. You're gonna roll out your contact paper and cut it down to the size of your foam board. Now, the contact paper I was using was not quite as big as the foam board, but don't worry. I did stress about this a little bit, but I found it doesn't matter at all, and I'll show you that in a minute. It is very rolly, so just put something on top to weight it down to avoid that fight while cutting. Now, it looks like I've paused the video here. Nope. That was me realizing I had not taken into account the direction of the design before cutting, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to fix it. I wanted the bricks going horizontally, so I had cut it the wrong way. But never fear, I figured out a fix. I was going to have to use more than one piece anyway, so I just used this piece in the middle of my board because you don't want the seam to be in the middle for your photos because that would be more likely to show up when taking your photos. So now I'm just trimming it down some more. So learn from my mistake and think about the direction of your design before cutting your contact paper down to size. Now flip it over and start to peel the backing off, but only a little bit. I believe this is the key to getting the contact paper down without bubbles. I only peeled a couple inches down and then flipped it over to start sticking it down to the foam board. Stick the sticky part down and smooth it out carefully with your scraper tool. I'm using my favorite scraper tool from Dollar Tree. It's by all the kitchen tools because it's actually some kind of kitchen scraper tool. I don't know exactly what you use it for because I like to craft, not cook. <laughs> but it's my favorite for adhering any sort of vinyl material I work with. When the first section is adhered, slowly peel the backing off a couple inches at a time and smoothing with your scraper as you go. And remember, slow and steady wins the race. Do not rush this part or you'll end up with bubbles and lots of troubles. I did not speed any of this up so you could see in real time just how slow I was going. The next part is a little tricky, but not really. You just have to match up your pattern as best you can so your pattern will blend. It's like putting up wallpaper if you've ever done that. Except this doesn't have to be as perfect, I promise. I was stressing about getting the perfect matchup, but as you'll see in the photos that I'll show you that I took with these backdrops, you can't see the seams or any imperfections in the photos. So just match it up the best you can and don't stress as much as I originally did. You'll even see that in order to get the best matchup, I have about an inch of the white foam board showing on one side, but that's okay. I just know I'll have to be sure when taking photos with this board that I have that side out of the frame, um, which it isn't hard and you'll see that in just a minute. So just repeat the process on the other side until your foam board is all covered with contact paper. And look here, can you see the seam? Nope, I told ya. I ended up with five different contact paper designs to start with. I may make some more as needed, but I think I have a good variety for starting out. Use the back side of your foam board for a different design so you essentially have two backdrops per foam board. I recommend you think about which designs complement each other that you'll want to use together and be sure to have them on different boards so you can use them together in the same photo. I'm going to show you how to set them up next and how to use them. Oh, and to trim off the excess contact paper as close to the foam board as possible, I found it easiest to use an X-Acto knife and run it along the side. Be sure to have some sort of cutting mat underneath to protect your work surface when doing this. Now, how to use these photo backdrops. I am by no means a photography expert, but I'm learning as I go and continually trying to improve my product photos. But here's the setup I use. Natural light is best, so you want to set up near a window if possible. I'm just moving my end tables to use as my little photo stand in my living room. You'll need these little L brackets to hold your backdrops together. They're on Amazon and the link will be below. 
They will allow you to create a table surface along with a backsplash. You can interchange them and use them for either the table surface or the backsplash. Then it's up to you to play around with your layouts and composition for your photos. Here are some of the photos I've taken for my website so far using these backdrops. You can also do flat lay photos, which in that case you only need one board for those. So what do you think? If you've made it this far, I think it's safe to say you probably have a business and are in need of taking good product photos. So comment below with your business name and link so I can check out your business. I think it would be fun to know who all is watching and I'd love to see what other types of businesses you have. I'm always up for some good online shopping and we can support each other by sharing what we do. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, all of those businesses linked below. If you found this video helpful to you in any way, I would love it if you would hit that like button and also subscribe if you want to see more DIY tutorials in the future and hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.